Hi, my friend. A guy is, uh, my friends, a guy I was working with the other day from Texas shared with me his strategy, which I, uh, I'm actually very intrigued by, which was he was going to annuitize everything at, uh, I think, 59 years old when he separated from service, uh, even though the, the annuity money would be vastly more than the expenses that he needs. So he says, I like the idea of having more. I like the idea of having control, i.e., I have the money where I can decide what to do with it, not be at risk of the market. So it's a way of dealing with the sequence of return risk. I thought, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So I'm going to try a quick experiment. And I, I'm thinking this through, and I'm, I'm sure there's a million ways to Sunday to see how this works. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go to Right Capital. And it would pretend it's me and Char, Charlotte, my wife. And we're going to say we got $500,000 in an IRA. All right, it's my IRA. We got $500,000 in the S&P 500. The S&P 500, we expect to give us 7.4% rate of return. All right. And then uh, let's see. We need, let's go to profile. Uh, we need goals. Uh, 4000 a month in retirement expenses. That's all inclusive. So basically 50000 a year is what we need in retirement expenses when you factor in fact, uh, taxes. And that includes health care. That includes you know food on the table, uh, housing, the whole thing. Just saying we need $50,000 a year. Uh, we're going to both, we have, let's go to social security. Uh, my social security, I'll plan on taking when I'm 70 and we'll say my PIA is 2,900 Charlotte social security. She will plan on taking when she's 67 and her PIA is a thousand. All right. So uh, I hope that makes sense. So the question is that comes in, let's go to retirement. My Pablo has got his head up. So he's thinking he's waiting for my oldest to come home, in which case I'm sure he'll bark. Uh, we got 97% probability of success. We're leaving $2 million of liquid net worth, which, uh, which is pretty good. So let's take a look at what the confidence looks like. And that dark blue graph there, you can see at 69 and 70, because we're not taking Social Security, uh, basically 95% of the time we have over $31,000 our median liquid net worth is $328,000, which means 50% of the time we have more, 50% of the time we have less. But then when Social Security starts kicking in, that blue vein starts rising quite nicely because Social Security is more than enough to pay our bills. Uh, in fact, we got you know 1 million here at uh, when I'm 83 years old. Uh, so that's pretty good. So we're not running out of money. All right, so we got 97% chance of success. We're not running out of money. Let's take a look at the cash flows. Uh, you can see we have no income at all for one, two, three, four, five, six years. No income. And then even seven years, we just got Charlotte's little bit of Social Security. That's it. Uh, but we have expenses, 48000 49 50 52 54 55 57 So it's basically one, two, three, 300, you know, let's say $375,000 is what our, uh, our, our expenses are uh, when you factor in taxes as well. So we need 48,000, but we have tax payment of 22,777 because it's all coming from an IRA. So our total outflows is 50,777. All right, hold on, I'm gonna pause it. We need 50,777 to live on uh, because we gotta pay that uh, 2,700 bucks in taxes. So just to show you how that works, I, I get this a lot with a Roth IRA. Where are the taxes coming from? Hey buddy, and I'll show you right here. So we take withdrawals from accounts, our total withdrawal, in order to live on $48,000 from the IRA is $50,777 because we got to pay the taxes. And the same thing happens with Roth, my friends. Even if uh, uh, even if you don't have uh, money to pay the taxes for your Roth IRA, it's coming from the IRA in which to pay the taxes. So it's a $48,000 net distribution, but it's $50,777 that you're taking out. Hope that makes sense. All right, so let's go back to summary. Uh, but again, we have no income flows. I just want, let's just look at the tax form here real quick. 2020, uh, we see a taxable amount of uh, IRA distribution, 50,777. We got a standard deduction of 24,000. It puts us in a 26,000 taxable income, uh, which effectively is a 10% tax bracket. So, uh, uh, okay, so you see that. I, actually, it's gonna be effective a lot less than that. Effective tax bracket will be a lot less. In fact, we can, see what the effective tax rate will be if we go here yeah so the effective tax rate is about five and a half okay so that's not so bad all right so what let's uh as you can see here's the widow's tax trap it goes from 9.6 to 16 percent we're, we're not gonna get that so much right now but let's just uh let's take a look at cash flows again Anyway, so again, don't forget, $50,000 off a $500,000 portfolio is a 10% distribution. 
And yet we're still coming out fine because Social Security kicks in. Uh, when I die, uh, Charlotte's income drops from 126 to 94, but her taxes go from 15,800 to 26,000. Uh, but she still has a lot of net assets. So let's go to accounts and you got the IRA money. Then we got the taxable money because every time we have money from the IRA for RMDs, it's got to go someplace. So let's go withdrawals from accounts and you can see, um, bear with me just a sec. Let's go to RMDs. So you got 31,000 for RMD. It's going to your taxable account. Your taxable account is building up each and every year. I don't think net cash. Yeah, so there's your net cash flows. So we're taking RMDs there. We're adding to the taxable account. The taxable account also has its own earnings as well. All right, so let's. Uh, that looks pretty good. I wonder if we, let's just do Social Security. I was just curious. We'll do Social Security at, uh, uh, we'll do floor time range. What does that look like? Um, yeah, it actually makes it a little bit better from a percentage, even though it makes it less, uh, not much less on a terms of total income. I, in this case, I probably would take Social Security. It's uh, 67, actually. But uh, all right, so that's fine. So what I want to do is let's uh, now go ahead and annuitize everything. And we got $500,000. I guess, yeah. So let's annuitize. We got $500,000 in a an IRA. And we're 60, we're going to say we got 6% uh, annuity. That gets $30,000 a year. All right, so let's do this. Let's do social security. We're going to annuitize. We got 1.9 million. Let's take social security early. And I don't know what that's going to be. 62, all right. And we're going to have Charlotte taking that 62 as well. So we're going to have her taking a 62, I'm taking a 62, and then we're going to add an annuity of 30000 a year. No, I have to, we're going to have to leave $50,000 in a side account to pay the tax. No, we won't. We can pay the tax from Social Security. Let's see. Let's just do it. Okay, we're going to have a calendar year uh, life, and we're going to do 100% survivor. Okay, gotcha. Let's see what, and then we're going to not increase it. We're going to say no increase. Okay. Now we got to take that off this. We're going to not include it in the plan. Okay. Now let's see. So you see what we're doing? We're saying, okay, we're going to take out that $500,000 IRA that I have, annuitize it. It's going to generate $30,000 a year for the rest of my life, uh, in Charles' life, whoever lives long. And then we're going to take Social Security right out the gate. So let's see what this looks like now. Still got a hundred. Oh, yeah! Look at that. Still got a hundred percent success rate, but we only have three hundred thousand dollars left. Cash flows. So our income flows fifty six thousand. That's going to be from the annuity and Social Security. So my Social Security is twenty six thousand. Hers will be next year uh, twelve thousand. So that's thirty eight thousand there. All right. In our annuity income is right there, thirty thousand bucks. So our total income is uh, sixty nine thousand, seventy thousand bucks. Once she's uh, Charles getting Social Security as well. All right. Now let's go to accounts. So all that money's got to go someplace. It won't be withdrawal from account. It'll be net cash flow. Yeah, so we're adding, let's actually look at taxes. Yeah, look at that. So we're staying in a low tax bracket, 3.6. That jumps up quite a bit to 7.8. That's interesting to me. Let's look at confidence. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's interesting to me. So let's see what it looks like when we die. Right. So we're going to. Um, that was what I want to say. Excuse me. Yeah, so the non qualified assets are growing. 
because that's the amount of money we're adding to it uh, because we have more income coming in than we're spending. Yeah, I think it stopped growing at some point. Let's see. Yeah, it does. All right, so it stops growing because at that point, the annuity isn't paying, uh, adjusting for inflation. So at that point, we're dipping into principal um, some because we don't have enough income from, uh, let's see, withdrawals from accounts. Later on down the road, yeah, we're gonna have to start taking money from the uh, from the I, from the non qualified account because we don't have enough income. So let's go back to cash flows. Uh, yeah, summary. So yeah, right here. So whenever we got net flows, let's just do this. All yours. So we got net flow of seven thousand, eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand. All that should be going into the. Uh, uh, six, seven thousand, eighteen, eighteen, eighteen. That all that should be going, and then look, it starts dropping as inflation kicks in. So our expenses are going up from forty-eight to fifty. Well, then you got factoring taxes to sixty. Uh, but our because the annuity is only thirty thousand bucks, it's not adjusted for inflation. Yeah. So our expenses are going up, but our income is uh, is staying relatively low. It's only going up by a little bit with a cost of living for inflation. So 88,000, 90,000, 91,000, but our expenses are going up. And at some point it's gonna catch it right here. Our income is 107.5 and our expenses are 108.5. So that's still not too bad. Um, and if you go down to our net worth, oops. Yeah, 334 at our death, which isn't bad. All tax-free, by the way. Invested assets, yeah. But it serves your portfolio return. What's that portfolio return? What's that giving us? I don't know. It doesn't look like much. So I just put in the cash. Let's see, we got 225. 454 is our present value. We're adding 11,241 to it. We're 238,950 is future value, 1N. Oh, I can't be, I'm doing something wrong here. And look at that, we're getting, we're adding 10, uh, see that's, that's something wrong here. So let's do this, let me pause for a second. See what happened here because I had no investments at all. It just put me all in fixed income, all in cash. <laughs> That's not going to get the job done. So if you look at cash, you go to retirement. I said, why is the return so low? Only $305,000. And the reason for that is watch. We go to accounts. Um, uh, was it, was it uh, net cash flows? What was that? What is that? Hold on just a second. Go to addition to accounts. Any balance by accounts? Nope. Wasn't that withdrawals? Most of withdrawals. Oh, what is it net worth? Huh. Invested assets. There we go. Okay. Uh, so here we go. And so I said, wait a second. We got sixty-three thousand in there to start. We added seventeen thousand, and we only made six hundred thirty-one dollars on a uh, sixty-three thousand dollar portfolio. Uh, that that meant it was solely in cash, and I I didn't realize that until I just had messed around with it a little bit. So if you look, we have a zero stocks, one hundred percent bonds. All right. So, but what we what I did then is I said, okay, so, you know, forget that. Let's pretend we have a, a portfolio, and I went to investments. And I added one share of VFINX, the S&P 500. Uh, that way we can now hit included in plan. And what we'll do is we go to investment and what you'll see now is 100% stocks. Okay, so that's more of an even uh, approach there. So now let's take a look. Retirement. And look at that, now it's 969. So we're leaving almost a million bucks. That's interesting. So let's take a look here. And yeah, there we go. So remember, this is taking Social Security at uh, 62. That's interesting. At, uh, yeah, well, 63. Um, hmm. What if we left? Hmm. How else could we do this? And annuitizing everything. 
there'd be no other way to do it because you have to have some money to pay the bills until uh, I think we just did 250. So let's do this. Let's let me try something else because we gotta pay. We have to have some kind of money to pay the bills while we're waiting for Social Security to kick in. Let's try one other thing here. Time check 413. So what if we to investments and we're gonna go to this guy we're gonna put this as including plan but instead of 1800 we're gonna do so 1816 divided by 2 908 All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna annuitize we're gonna leave this in here to allow us to defer Social Security until I'm 67 and that will leave us 250,000 in cash All right, I hope that makes sense um, to live off. All right. and now we're going to take Social Security at 67. I think I can get away with it. Maybe we'll see. We'll take hers early. Yeah, we should be able to get away with that. Let's take a look. Oh. Oh, wait. I yeah, know I got to do it. I forgot to change the annuity. Hold on just a second. Fifteen thousand. Interesting. That totally eliminates eliminates the sequence of return risk. Well, he's a little bit less at the end of the day, but it takes that risk off the table, and everything you're leaving is still being left tax-free. The tax should be pretty low here too, I think. Yeah, look at that. Six, huh. That's, uh, that's nuts. That is nuts. Um, let's go to net worth. So, we got our, so what's happened here is we're taking money out of our cash account because we need 50000 a year to live on. Let's just guess. Because we got Charles got her Social Security, so we need 33000 a year to live on. Once I hit Social Security, oh, look, we can wait. Oh, man, this might. This might be the way to do it. We can even wait to take Social Security until I'm 70. If we Let's go down to profile. Income. I think this might be the way to do it. You're totally leaving uh, sequence of return risk off the table. Yeah, that works. That works. Oh, dude. That's freaking crazy. That's freaking crazy. The income flows 15000 from the annuity. Charlotte, then we're going to take money out of the cash account to pay the rest. We need 48000 expenses. We don't have any taxes at all. Well, I guess if it was an IRA, it'd still be taxed. It's okay, buddy. Let's see. I guess going with the other house. Then Charles gets Social Security, we twenty four thousand. The rest got to come from. It's going to come from the savings account we have, which is this taxable account right here. So we're taking thirty three thousand first year, twenty five the next, twenty six, and then come seventy. We're not taking anything. How much is left in that taxable account at that point? Uh, it's ninety seven thousand bucks. Oh no, it's me. It's me, buddy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And then look at this. And then it's growing. No, it's me. It's just me, buddy. Uh, that's okay. It's okay. That's all right, Growly. And then when we're at a beginning balance, $637,000, we are taking $18,000 out, but we're adding net cash. Man, I tell you, this is the way to do it. All right, I got to think on this a little bit. So the, the, the situation, let me just revisit this with you. 
the situation is the thing, the, the risk that everyone's facing with when they first retire is the sequence of return risk. Well, if you need a certain amount of money to live on, you take that out of your IRA, not necessarily take a distribution, but you put it into a cash account at some point. Now, in this case, I, I did a distribution and I, I, I should have left in the IRA, but it's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's not that big of a deal because the taxes are so low, if anything. So you're taking, in this case, we took half the money we think we need to live on uh, for the, until I hit Social Security, right? So we're putting, in this case, $250,000 in a cash account, a stable value fund, Ginnie Mae, however you want to do it. And then we're annuitizing the remaining amount. So that's $250,000 being annuitized, which gives us an income of $15,000. We need $48,000 a year to live on. So we need, in the first year, we need $33,000 um, uh, from that cash account, that cash bucket. The next year, when Charlotte's Social Security kicks in, uh, I have the 15000 annuity plus her Social Security is $12,000. That's 27000 bucks. We only need, at that point, $23,000 to live on. And that's going to come from the cash bucket, which had 250000 in there initially. Shh. But now it's got a little bit less. But that bucket stays intact until you're 70 when you take Social Security. And then, and then you're just adding adding to it because you get your annuity of fifteen thousand, your social security, and you don't spend enough because all that is much more than your expenditures, which means you're reinvesting in a taxable account, which is growing. So you got sequence of return risk, and you got reverse dollar, or you got dollar cost averaging. And on top of that, we're still pretty good relative to the overall net worth. We have a hundred percent success rate. Yeah, we have a 300000 less as a, a overall net worth, but that's... All right, I got to chomp on this little bit. This is fantastic. So, my man Harry, this is a good, good plan of action. Never thought about it, and I'll dive into this deeper. I'll see you.